There's no doubt that golf is a game where both power and accuracy are critical to playing well. And most players that you look at, I think when you speak to them, they would love to hit the golf ball a little bit further. I'm, I'm sure you're probably one of those people. But it's perceived to be very difficult to find a way of producing more distance without significantly changing your, your golf swing. And especially as players get a little bit older, distance gets reduced and uh, it becomes a little bit more difficult to hit the ball as far as you used to. I'm going to show you something today that is a position that I would suggest is very important, even crucial even, to playing well, something that I would suggest is common to all good players. Now, as I've said in previous videos, I'm not the kind of person who promotes one methodology, one type of golf swing, but I do look for simple, easy to follow positions or elements of the golf swing, which I find are common to all good players. And the one I'm going to show you today, I would consider to be one of the most important, both from hitting the ball accurately and particularly from a distance point of view, a club speed point of view. And it's a backswing position. It relates to what happens in the mid part of our backswing. Now, we address the ball. When we take the club away, ideally arms and body working together away from the ball, moving the club without really too much hand or wrist action at this stage, just down at the bottom. But one of the elements I see people struggle with is having made the takeaway, what do they do next? And there's a tendency, often in the search for a wide backswing, to keep the club going back without engaging the wrists. And we finish up with a position where when the left arm gets horizontal, the club shaft is almost still in a line with the left arm there. Now, the wider your wrist angle is through the backswing, the harder it is to create speed or what you might perceive to be release through impact. So, if I don't use my wrists in the backswing, one of two things is going to happen. Either my backswing is going to look very short and stiff, or worse still, without using my wrist, I now go searching for the next hinge and I bend the elbow. It creates a very narrow squeezed position at the top and almost inevitably results in a casting of the club on the downswing. And now the shaft and the arms are forming one line again and I have to hit the ball with a stiff one line motion. Now, if we want to create club head speed, if we want to create swish through the ball, we have to engage the hands and wrists. So the more the wrists hinge your cock upwards, the more whip or club head speed I can produce. Now, most players initially would perceive this to be less controlled. The reality is that by hinging the wrist correctly, you improve the line of the swing, and ironically, you'll hit the ball straighter as a result. So, the key position would be Complete the takeaway, and when your left arm is horizontal, the club shaft should start to form the letter L. Now, for those of you who maybe are going to film your golf swing or like detailed information, numbers, not necessarily looking for a right angle there, 90 degrees is potentially a little too aggressive, but I would certainly look for a position where the left arm and the club shaft are less than 110 degrees. That's a number that I find is common to all players who play well and play success, uh, successfully. So if you're looking to increase your club speed, more wrist hinge, more wrist cock in the backswing will not only improve the width at the top, but it will allow you to create downswing whip and speed through the ball. Now I'm going to use flight scope here to help us understand that and to help us see that. So we're going to hit a couple of shots. I'm going to use one swing that has relatively little wrist action and another swing which has more wrist action built into it. And we're going to see what happens to the club speeds through the ball.
Okay, so I've just hit a couple of shots there for you. One swing, very limited wrist action. One swing with significantly more, a lot more swish down at the bottom. And we use flight scope to measure those. And I've got a couple of interesting results here. So the first swing with limited wrist action, because I'm relatively tall, uh, I was still able to produce 79.8 miles an hour. Now, because of the type of swing that it was, I'd also lost control of the, the, the contact a little bit. It was slightly mishit. And as a result, the ball only flew 127 yards through the air. So relatively low speed and not very much carry distance through the air, partly down to the mishit, partly down to the lack of speed. The shot which I hit with more wrist hinge was more solidly struck. The swing speed went up to 87.2 miles an hour, so close to 10 miles an hour faster. And as a consequence of that, the carry distance went up to 154.4. So significantly more carry through the air, close to 30 yards. So for me, wrist hinge is a very important element of the golf swing. It's something that all good swings have, something that all good players have. It doesn't have to be the same for every player. But I would certainly suggest if you get somebody to perhaps video your swing using a camera phone or a, a tablet device, you're able to slow it down in the V1 app. Have a look at how much wrist action you're able to produce in the backswing because if you build it into the backswing, it will be available to use through impact. More wrist action, better club speed, guaranteed to give you more distance.